Okay, I'd like to get this quick video up to explain the uh, in-class problems that we did today to make sure everyone understands all the nuances of uh, easy geometry and some of the other things on this uh, uh, problem assignment. Um, first, let me look at uh, the first problem we had on here, which was the hybridization, because there's an interesting uh, example here. So hopefully you know by now that an alkene carbon has sp2 hybridization because in order to make that second bond it has to be a pi bond which requires a p orbital so of the three p orbitals initially um, one is left as a p the other two are hybridized with the s to make sp2 and that has a bond angle of roughly 120 degrees between each of those other bonds in an sp2 hybridized atom when we move to an alkyne carbon uh, now we have two pi bonds that have, require two p orbitals on that carbon to make those pi bonds. So that only leaves an s and a p left to hybridize. So that is sp hybridization with 180 degrees uh, angle between those bonds. Um, what's interesting about this molecule on the right, and you might not have seen something like this before, is that um, indeed the two n carbons are sp2 hybridized. They're like a normal alkene. Um, as I described for the first example. But that central carbon has pi bonds to two different carbons. So actually, if you just focus on that central carbon atom, that carbon has, um, uh, has to make two pi bonds, um, and that only leaves an S and a P left. So it is similar to an alkyne in that it is SP hybridized. Uh, the other two Ps are uh, remaining to make the pi bonds. Now let me just draw what that orbital picture looks like just so we're clear. So if we if we look at those three carbons in a row um, and we look at the pi bonds that are present, let me just draw one uh, here between the left carbon and the central carbon. That would be a pi bond that would be uh, side to side overlap uh, both above and below the plane as I've shown it here. Now if that was an alkyne or a triple bond, the second pi bond would be orthogonal to that in this direction, right? So that would be a triple bond. But in fact, uh, that bond doesn't have to go to that uh, same carbon. It could actually go to a different carbon. So if I uh, remove this and I think about that pi bond going to this carbon over here, right? Um, that uh, creates a second pi bond. Notice that the configuration of the central carbon doesn't change from that of an alkyne. That's why it's still an sp hybridized atom with a 180 degree bond angle between those carbons. So that explains um, what we refer to as an allene structure with we have two cumulative double bonds uh, directly in a row in this case. Okay, so that's a little bit about that um, hybridization and geometry. Let's take a look at <clears throat> these examples for EZ and, and focus on why we think about EZ. So I do want you to remember that these molecules that are drawn in a line structure have hydrogens on there that aren't written. And particularly when we're looking at the double bond and focusing on that, we... Uh, find it useful sometimes to actually write that hydrogen in just so we can we can keep track. So again, what we need to look at is um, that double bond has the potential to be um, stereoisomers, and we need to figure out whether the configuration is E or Z. So if we take a look at this, on the left side, it's pretty easy to identify that it is the methyl group which gets the higher priority over the hydrogen. It's the right side of that double bond that we need to uh, figure out. And so let me just draw the drawing trees to show you the difference uh, in this case. So in the, in the top case we have, at the attachment points, we have a carbon. And on the bottom case, we have also a carbon. Let me make this a little smaller so you can see. Um, okay, so we can't make a distinction at the first atom uh, in the row. Now, um, the double bond, remember, we envision the double bond as being, instead of that double bond, we have this attached to a carbon and that side attached to an imaginary carbon. Um, and so we can continue on this way. So if we uh, look at this top case, this is attached to a hydrogen, which isn't written, and then two different carbons. And on the bottom case, we're attached to a hydrogen and two different carbons. And I'll just draw the imaginary carbon there. One is the, one is the actual carbon and the other is the imaginary carbon, which I'll just draw in red. Uh, we still can't make a distinction because we have, we have 
hydrogen, carbon, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, carbon. So that doesn't allow us to show any difference at that level. So let's go out further. Um, on the top, these hydrogens are attached, these carbons are attached to three different hydrogens. And on the bottom, uh, that is going to be a little different. So if we, if we look at that, those are all hydrogens in that level. In the bottom, if we look at, at this carbon here that I've indicated blue, it's attached to two hydrogens and one imaginary carbon. And this is why we need to think about those other carbons uh, that are on there. Um, and so at this point, what we see is that there is a difference um, when we get out to this level. So all hydrogens versus now we have a carbon. So the double bond actually does get the priority in this case. Um, and so this would be the higher priority group. So in, in the molecule I've shown here, the higher priority groups are on the same side of the plane of the double bond, same side. So they are in the Z configuration. Okay, Z configuration. <clears throat> okay, so that's that one. Let me let's go to the next one. Let me delete this and go to the next example. Clean this up here. If you need to pause and go back on the video, that's fine. Uh, in this case, um, we are looking at a situation where we have uh, again uh, two different groups on the left side, two different groups on the right side. We have um, a CH3 group here versus a carbon. So if we look, I'm not going to draw all this out, but you can if you want to. If we look, there's a carbon there and then a carbon there. There's no distinction. Uh, but uh, the CH3 is attached to only other hydrogens. In the top case, this is now attached to, it's got three bonds to oxygen. Uh, so that hopefully is pretty clear that that one gets the priority over the methyl group on the left side. Okay, let's take a look at the right side. Again, we have a carbon here and a carbon here. Let me just draw this out for you. Um, so that's attached to a, a carbon there and a carbon on the bottom. Uh, no distinction there. On the top, we look at um, this attached to two hydrogens and an oxygen. And on the bottom, we have one hydrogen and two bonds to oxygen. So right there, we can make a distinction that there's an extra oxygen compared to hydrogens. And so this bottom case this would have the higher priority over the OH. And notice now those are on opposite sides of that double bond. And so that would be the E geometry, the E geometry. <clears throat> okay. Let me erase this, make some room here, and we'll talk about this next example. Uh, this is one that elicited the most questions in class. Um, in this case, what we have is a a molecule which has double bonds um, in two different places. So let me make this a little smaller and we'll make it green. So we have a double bond here, which I'll highlight green and a double bond here, which I'll highlight blue, okay? Both of those double bonds could exist as um, either E or Z or cis or trans isomers. So they have the potential to be stereoisomers and we need to identify both. So let's take a look at the one on the left first. Uh, so again, it, how, it is useful to write in the groups which are not shown, and in particular the hydrogens. And so on the left side, we're looking for the highest priority group, which would be this methyl group versus the hydrogen. And on the right side, we have a hydrogen versus a carbon. Okay, So those would be the priority groups. Um, I, I think when you have two hydrogens here, it's probably a little bit easier to distinguish because those will always be the lower priority. And so they are on opposite sides of that double bond. So that double bond is actually the E geometry, E geometry for this double bond. Okay. Uh, so that wasn't too hard, right? So let's back this up. Um, I'm just going to back this up and we'll focus now on the other one. Let me just write here first that this double bond is of the E geometry. Okay, now we have to take a look at the other double bond. And in this case, what we have is um, a methyl group here, CH3, uh, versus um, a carbon at that position. There's no difference, carbon, carbon, uh, except that the bottom one is attached to only hydrogens, whereas the carbon on top uh, has other bonds to carbon. So hopefully you can see that this would have the higher priority 
over the CH3. Okay, now let's focus on the, the right side of this. Uh, again, we have first here, we have a carbon and a carbon. Let me draw these to show that carbon is attached to two hydrogens and another carbon. This carbon is attached to two carbons and then a hydrogen not written. So at that level, what we see is um, that hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon versus carbon, hydrogen, carbon. There's one additional high carbon, so that would also have the higher priority. Um, and then if we look at the two higher priority groups across that double bond, that would also have the E geometry because they're on opposite sides. Okay, so how would we name this molecule then? Um, what we need to do, as I showed in class, is type, make sure we assign the the uh, number of the double bond with the geometry. So if we number the molecule in this direction, it's an octadiene. And so in this case, I'm not going to put the substituents in. I did that in class. And I have the name on, um, on the handout, I think. Did I put that on the answer key? It should be on the answer key. And so this molecule would be uh, substituents at the beginning, and then it's a an oct, octa, let's see, one double bond starts at two, so it would be two, and E, referring to the geometry of that one, four E diene. So the two configurations are both shown in the name because both of those double bonds could exist as different stereoisomers. Okay? Okay, hopefully you uh, get that problem. If you have questions, please contact me. Um, here's another double bond. It is only this double bond in the middle, which we need to consider for uh, easy geometry because the other double bond is on the end, end of the carbon chain. Uh, so there are no possibilities for stereoisomers. So in the right side, the highest priority group, as I showed in the example, earlier, an ethene versus an, an ethene versus an ethyl. Uh, this one is going to have the higher priority. If you map out that tree, you'll see that. So that's the right side. Let's take a look at this, this left side here. Um, if we look at these again, we first have a carbon at this point and a carbon at this point. Uh, no difference. This carbon is attached to two hydrogens and an oxygen, whereas this carbon is attached to one hydrogen and two bonds to nitrogen. Okay, so which has the higher uh, a higher um, atomic number? That's, that's one of the things you need to think about. So if you look at a periodic table, you'll see that um, the uh, atomic number obviously would be uh, oxygen greater than nitrogen. So no matter how many bonds there are to ni nitrogen, it's not about how many bonds. Um, if we're comparing different atoms, it's about the higher atomic number. So it would be the OH group, which gets the priority. So this would be the Z configuration. Okay, and finally, this last example here um, doesn't really uh, have easy geometry because this group and this group are identical. So it wouldn't matter if you switch switch their positions, um, it would be the same thing. So across the double bond here, if you think of the left and the right side of the double bond, uh, we don't have different groups with which to have a relative comparison from the right to the left. So there are no stereoisomers possible. Okay? Okay, I, I do want to uh, just take a couple of minutes and talk about this last problem because this is going to be coming up in future chapters. Um, what we have here is a double bond reacting with a mineral acid, hydrochloric acid. And you'll notice what happens in this, in this example is that the double bond here disappears. Okay, no more double bond. And what we've added is the addition of hydrogen and chlorine across that double bond. And that goes by a stepwise process. Um, it turns out that this double bond is electron rich. So there's electron density in the pi bond and that's the weakest bond in the molecule. And in the hydrochloric acid, we have an H, basically you can think about that as H plus and Cl minus. So if you have something that's electron rich, what is it gonna to prefer to react with? 
something plus or something minus. Clearly, the electrons will repel each other, so it wants to react with something plus. So when you see something, you can identify this as the nucleophile, nucleophile, which is a nucleus loving or looking for plus charge. And then this is an electrophile, the hydrogen part, the H plus. Electrophile is seeking out electrons or loves electrons. Okay, so how exactly does this reaction work? Well, it's a stepwise reaction, as I've indicated above. Um, and how this reaction works is that the electrons in the double bond form a new bond to hydrogen, break the HCl bond. So H plus basically adds to the double bond. And that could occur in two different ways. The one that leads to this product <clears throat> would be to replace that um, uh, double bond. Let me write this out for you. To put that hydrogen here, Leaving, so the two electrons that are in that bond came from the pi bond initially, okay? <clears throat> so if you take those two electrons away from uh, that double bond to make the new sigma bond to hydrogen here, what is left behind on the other carbon? And that would be a, <clears throat> an empty orbital, which would be a plus charge. So it's a carbocation. The byproduct here would be Cl minus. And so this, this, in the second step, that simply forms a bond with the <clears throat> carbon that's plus uh, to form a new covalent bond and form that product. Now the alternative is, which I didn't show here, is that that hydrogen could add to the other side of the double bond. So if it adds to the carbon on the right instead, so that hydrogen that we've added from HCl is there, that leaves this carbon plus, and then the halide could add to where that plus charge is. So the other possible product here would be uh, the one in which the chlorine adds to the N carbon instead of the middle carbon. So that would be the other possible product. Now, we'll see when we get into discussions in the next chapter that uh, there is a preference for forming this one, and we'll explain all the reasons why. So stay tuned for that.